when you go no contact with the narcissist. What are they doing? Well, right away, they're not doing too much. They're not concerned about you. They got a new shiny toy that they're fooling around with, but at some point shortly thereafter, they're going to come back to you. They're going to be looking for you and they're going to think, well, you know, I'm just going to get them right back. I'm just going to give them a call. It's been a while. And I'll be like, hey. And you'll be like, what you doing? Because that's what you always said. And then they'll be like, oh, I was just thinking about you. You want to come over? Yeah. But no, this time you're going to be like on block. You're going to have them on block. They'll be like, that's all right. I'm going to, um. I'm going to leave him a voicemail. So you block, but you can leave him a voicemail, you know, because it goes right to voicemail. But then you, they never get an answer back because you um, deleted it. You didn't even listen to it. So they'd be like, that's OK. I'm going to email him. But then you got email going to spam and you didn't read the email because the email's toxic. And you know that if you read the email and you start to believe the email, it'll take your energy. They'll take your energy from the email. They don't even have to be in person. They can take it from an email. If you read it and believe all the devaluations in it or anything, or the love, whatever, they'll get the, they'll take the negative or the positive energy. They don't care. But they love that negative energy. But if you block them and you delete it and you don't read it and you don't read into any toxicity, because see, there's spells and everything that they do. And, um, they're basically witches and warlocks, man, if you think about it. They're full of demons. And all the different demons in them determine what type of cluster B they're going to operate like. Because they're, 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 uh, there's only five different types you can be. They don't have that many personalities. Because they're demons, they're not very creative. They're just like AI. It's like information and statistics or something you know but what they can do is you know satan can't make you uh sin but he can give you options the narcissist can't make you sin but they can give you options and it doesn't matter they're connected they're, they're, they've been hijacked by satan and then they try to do the same thing to you they try to hijack you and you're all connected that's why you're all they link up with you and they attach to you but they don't love with you. They don't bond with you. That's why they don't, um, their attachment style is they don't understand or know how to bond, pair bond. But they also don't know how to uh, leave the relationship because it was never a relationship. They're transactional and stuff, but but they never can leave because they're because of abandonment issues. So they can't attach, but they can't detach. And that's why they never will let you go. But they also use all of their sources of supply for um, regulation of self to determine, you know, like uh, their worth, their self-worth. And, you know, if they keep you down and bust you to pieces, you know, like I said in the last podcast or whatever, like that's what regulates them. They regulate themselves through all of their supply. But if you, if you heal is the only way you can get the narcissist back. And so in the case like this, yeah, they don't, it's like, as you continue to block them, not talk to them, leave them alone, they're going to continue to want you more. And the fact of the matter is, is you can never be with the narcissist because when you love them, they hate you. When you hate them, they love you. So you, and the only way that you can survive and live a wholesome, fruitful life is for you to not want them and for, for them to miss you and want you. That's how the end game works with the narcissist. Or the other end game is, is that you do go back to them and they destroy you completely and then leave you. And then you're sitting in a uh, skilled nursing facility with not a dime to your name and nobody gives a damn about you. That's the other case. Or that you spend your whole life with them and 
just continually get devalued and treated like crap and you're a hollow, soulless self with nothing in there and you won't want to do anything. You'll be like a little kid stuck it off his baba's nipple for everything that you need. They're going to make you regress all the way back to wearing a damn diaper and uh, being incontinent. I'm telling you, man. They'll bring you right back to infant stage. And uh, if you let them, I mean, that's really, uh, they want to back you all the way up to zero, man, if they could. So just continue to push on, press on. Don't let your lusts get to you. Um, if you pray and read the word and stuff like that, or uh, you know what always helped me for strength and stuff like that? I would put the Bible in my ear on, on like YouTube or Bible IS or something. And I'd just go to bed and I'd let the like scripture run through my head all night long. And I feel better and boarded. I wouldn't even be worried about the narcissist anymore. So whenever I had like issues of lust, wanted to go back to the narcissist because I was addicted to them and all that, I would just put in like Proverbs and start from chapter one, man. I'll let that thing run all the way through. And in the morning, man, when I'd wake up, um, I'd feel energized, man. And I'd feel that I don't need that. And so you got to do whatever it takes to get through it, man. And, uh, you know, the living word helps, you know. But you can't go back to the narcissist. But they will then start to have feelings of regret. They will start to, you know, ruminate over you. Um, they will be telling their flying monkeys and sending them out looking for you. And the flying monkeys are really good about asking you what happened and trying to get you talking about it. If you start talking about the narcissist, it will get you pining for them. It will also get you trying to rationalize how you can get them back. So when you get around the flying monkeys, that's one of the tactics that the narcissist will use or the flying monkeys will use. And whether it's a natural thing that happens or it's a I don't think anything is really natural with narcissists, so I would say it's a spiritual tactic. But I'm saying, like, I think that sometimes the flying monkeys might be just asking, out of, uh, you know, out of, like, uh, you know, they're kind of, I want to know more of the story, you know, and, uh, and but as you start talking about it, it's going to get you wanting the narcissist. I mean, it's just one of the things that happens. So you just need to just tell them, look, I don't want to talk about that individual. I have nothing good to say, nothing bad to say. I'm just kind of moving on with my life, you know, that's it. And the same thing with the narcissist, man. You don't ever want to talk about the relationship. A lot of times they'll bait you into talking about it like, oh, you never cared and stuff like that. And you're going to be like, I cared a lot. I did all this and this and this. Next thing you know, you're kind of baited into, oh, my God, I want you. I need you. You're getting too close. That that hit is too close to you. That, that, um, that feeling that I can get the narcissist back is too close. That lust is too close. Um, so you want to try to stay far away from them, have very little to say. You want to get away from them as soon as possible if you are in their presence. Sorry, guys, I was working last night. And then you just want to keep it moving. They're going to continually want you more and more and more. And their hoovers are going to get further and further apart, but they're not going to let go of you. They will hoover you um, 10 years down the road, man, if they can. They will attempt. I mean, my ex-wife, man, she's hit me up several times over the years. But I'll tell you, man, if nothing else, once you get over the narcissist and you get out of this trauma bond and you start working on your life and you change it up, man, and you start having new fruit in your life and new energy and stuff, when you see that fool a few years down the road, you're going to be like, I don't even want to talk to your stupid ass and so you want to get to a level of that to where when you see them you're not attracted to them you don't want to have sex with them if they were to like throw it in your face you wouldn't hit that i like i wouldn't touch that with somebody else's thing man i'm telling you man and that's how you'll get and then they just won't know what to do. They're always going to want you. 
but at some point you're not going to want them anymore because they're a piece of trash and they're whores and if you let them they'll they'll make you feel like a damn whore too because they'll pick you up and drop you off and then come back in a few months and pick you up and drop you off too but they whore themselves out every day you know for things you know and and they're not uh they have no reciprocation man you can't be with somebody who doesn't have reciprocation they don't love you back with the same energy that you love them uh you know it's not transactional but like that energy should be even you know maybe you know you do different things for each other but it's equal in nature like it's worth it for me to, you know, maybe I work more or, you know, but man, you do all these things for me and you show your love to me, man. Or I work less, but I do all this stuff for you. And this is how I show my love to you. And I'm there for you. And actually we could talk about anything and we can break down any conversation about any reality in our life. And I'll be able to talk you through it and not fly off the handle. Do you want to be with somebody that you can't even have a conversation with? And when you go down the wrong path with them because you're about to unmask them or slip the mask and have them rage on you. So let's just not talk about it. You can't do that forever. At some point, you got to talk about it. And, you know, the narcissist continues to get get worse and worse. And that's because they've been holding all this stuff in and they've been doing well with it. But into their their teens and into their 20s because why they're young this stuff hasn't been built up yet it's building up all this garbage it's like a trash can that keeps getting more and more full at some point it's going to overflow and that's what happens to the narcissist they're going to start having breakdowns into their 30s because they're getting older they're losing their um youth and they're not having stability and they're not getting better with their personality. You can't hold this stuff in. They're going to rage more. And they're going to stop wearing the mask at some point. Because you can't wear. You can't cover up trash forever. You know. And that's where it gets worse and worse with the narcissist. And then after a while. You're going to look at the narcissist down the road. And they're not even going to look pretty anymore. Because this stuff catches up with them. You're going to start seeing these saggy wrinkled faces on them where all they did was frown when you weren't looking and smirk when you weren't looking that stuff starts to show through man because they be doing that all day long to people uh so you don't want them you're sleeping with the enemy they're lying and cheating on you every time they can they're talking to four people at a time while you're laying in bed with them via text are you serious they're setting up tomorrow's date while they're laying in bed with you and you hugging them while you sleeping. They're on the phone while you sleeping next to you. They're so delusional. They have no heart. There's nothing in there except a devil. And they came to shut down the empath. And, you know, God gave you uh, a special place in this world, man. Uh, and you got to be responsible with your empathy, man. Not a lot of people feel what you feel and can be energized like you can energize. And uh, you need to realize that it's a special gift and you've been abused all your life. And yeah, maybe you didn't feel good, but now you're awoke to it. So don't continue to get abused because before you were a target and a victim, but now you're a survivor and a warrior. And if you continue to stay in victimhood, you're going to stay in the relationship with the narcissist. You're going to be just as bad as they are. You're going to be enabling them. And uh, you're going to be a piece of shit, too, because you're not worth a damn either. In fact, you're helping them. You're like the drug dealer. And, uh, and, and you know, you're, you have a, a legit job and you're a legit person, but you're paying all you know to pay for all the bills in the house while the drug dealer is out there serving up dope to people that's getting them all killed you're not innocent when you're the enabler for the narcissist and so uh you're gonna reap whatever they get 
because if you're going to be in the company of fools and the company of evil and sleeping with evil, then you're evil too. You know, I just, uh, I hope y'all can give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a subscription if you haven't subscribed already. Um, try to put out new material every, you know, couple of days, every few days. Uh, so just stand tall, soldier up. Peace out. Love y'all.